if you have something nice to say, Heather told me this once, and it just stuck with me forever. She's like, if you have something nice to say to somebody and you don't say it, it's like buying a present, wrapping it, and not giving it to them. <laughs> we are here because we know the outcomes in our lives are within our control. That taking absolute ownership of how we eat, sleep, train, think, and connect with each other is how we'll optimize our health and happiness. That chasing excellence is how we grab hold of what is possible. Our mission is to live on the run, always chasing, never stop. All right, ready? With your giant bottle of water? Yes. All right. I'm, I'm fasting today. So am I. Are you I'm really? I'm starving right now, yeah. I am too. <laughs> it's going to be, we're like, we're like, <laughs> you look like a big turkey to me right now. <laughs> All right. How are you doing otherwise? I'm doing good. All right, good. Um, today, we're going to continue sort of a conversation that we've had in bits and pieces uh, in previous episodes. Um, and that is breaking down one of the elements of uh, what we've called the five factors of health. Mm -hmm. um, so we've done a few episodes on individual elements of this, but maybe let's start uh, and just give us a brief reminder of what the five factors are. Okay. So the five factors are the driving forces that produce or or hurt your health. And there are other ones, but these ones are inside your control. And they are um, how you think, how you move, how you sleep, how you... Um, connect and your nutrition. Did I say that? Oh, yep. Five? You got it. Yep. So basically those are the five. We talked about other ones as well that can uh, influence it, but they're, it's like your genetics and you, like where you live. Yep. And if you live in a small grid and city, but these are the five that really kind of um, um, you have control over and you can influence and you can take control of every single day that ultimately determine your health and your longevity and so on. Yeah. So we've done episodes, I believe on sleep, uh, nutrition, certainly, movement. Um, I don't remember if we've done specifically this, this topic on, with the, with the mindset, but I mm -hmm. think we did. Um, but basically what we've done is we've sort of come up with, or you've come up with 10 principles within each one of those five factors. Right. And so All today right. we're going to tackle the, the connecting one. Um, uh, and I'm going to run down your list of 10 and then give us a little bit of context for sort of each one. And, and we know, what, yeah, just for me as a reference that. for what we mean by connecting. Yeah. Cause it's not like, connecting the dots. It's not like connecting yep. two pieces of parts of a train. Yeah, good call. Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's relationships. Yeah. It's connecting with other people and um, maybe a little bit of insight into why this matters in terms of health. Kind of just Because um, this is the surprising one on the list. Or for this sure. Is the right. one that Everyone's like, okay, yeah. nutrition yeah. and training or exercise. Like I get, that's what the doctors are going to say. Yeah. Like, I get that. And then um, the other one's like sleep. Like, okay, okay. That's a little bit like maybe not as common. The doctor doesn't talk to you about that much. Um, people very rarely are talking about the mindset aspect yep. and almost no one's talking about this relationship aspect yeah. to it. But the relationship one, which we found through, you know, some research, if you look at um, centenarians, the people that live the longest and are disease free and who are also the happiest and basically people that live the longest, have the greatest health, the number one correlate to that is the connection that they have with other people. Mm -hmm. It's not the number of connections. So it's not, you know, are you the most popular? It's how deep and meaningful are those connections. So that's why we're talking about this yeah. is because it relates to our health and it's, um, it very mel very may well be the number one driving factor for all of these, you know, they might, but they might outweigh all the others combined, yeah. I, but I don't know if that's the case, but it's very, very important. Yeah, there's a really interesting study out of Harvard um, that I'm going to blank on the name of, but uh, I'll put it in the show notes um, or a link to it in the show notes. But that that really speaks to that quite yep. a bit um, that we don't have to get into, but it, but it's really interesting and sort of uh, uh, strengthens what you're saying. Okay, so the, so the 10 principles of connecting, what we're going to talk about today. The first one, take responsibility and give credit. Okay, this is like maybe stolen a little bit from the leadership aspect of it, yeah. uh, of things that we talk about, but... Um, in terms of what this is really driving home is like humility, right? It's it's like it's not about you. So um, I like the saying of um, don't point fingers, pull thumbs. Hmm. So in terms of like don't point fingers at what went wrong, when something goes wrong, like do the thumb thing and it's like it's on me, guys. Like if you're with somebody that's like that in general, that's not looking to be the center of attention, that doesn't need to um, um, take all the credit for everything that's happening, yet when something isn't going well – is the first one to kind of say like, my bad guys, that's on me. Like, that's just like, it's, that's the type of person that you're going to connect with better. Yeah. Second one, recognize that small things are big things. Okay. This is like, whether we're talking about like pursuing excellence, whether we're talking about running a business, um, 
or we're talking about interpersonal connection and relationships, this obviously matters. So anybody that's been married or dated someone for a long time knows how important the small things are. Mm -hmm. um, similar is anybody that's worked on things like um, presentation skills, um, the coaching or leadership. It's against the same thing. But the small things, think about like in terms of connecting with somebody, having a strong relationship with somebody. A small thing. Like imagine someone you leave late at night from someone's house and you're going to drive the 25 minutes to get home. When you get home, in 25 minutes, you get a phone call that says, just check in to make sure you got home okay. Mm -hmm. What you're, That's such a small little thing, but holy cow, that means so much in terms of like, they care about me. Yeah. Similar to that is things like body language. If you're talking to somebody and they're not making eye contact or there's eye rolls or there's... They're checking um, their phone. I was going to say their yeah. hand is on their phone. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, like those tiny, tiny little things like built over um, a period of time make massive differences in one way or the other. Yeah. Individually, none of them will, will For sure, shift right? the relationship but that's on the macro small level, but exactly. But, small things but are big over, things. over time, yep. <clears throat> Three, uh, seek to understand. Okay, this is... Um, I, to me, um, seeking to understand is about empathy. And I think what a lot of us have, have grown up with is this idea of like sympathy is a virtuous trait. Yeah. And I really disagree with that. I think um, sympathy drives people away from each other. I think it creates greater divides. I think it's um, a, an enemy of connection. With sympathy, here's a um, from Brene Brown. Um, who wrote Daring Greatly yep. and um, uh, Lead Daring to Dare to Lead? Something like that. Yeah. She has this great. I don't even know if it's in one of her books. Or, it is one. It's in uh, her Dare to Lead book. Um, I think she has this great analogy to kind of explain the difference between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is um, someone saying like, "Oh gosh, I feel bad for you," right? Where empathy is, um, I. I'm putting myself in your shoes and I feel what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And her analogy is, imagine someone falls to the bottom of a well. Sympathy is looking over the edge of the well and going, oh, that sucks. I'm really sorry you're at the bottom of that well. I'll come back and check tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's what sympathy is. Like, mm -hmm. I feel bad for you. Yep. Empathy is, I'm, gonna, I'm crawling down in the well with you. I get down here, I go, oh, it is scary down here. Let's try and figure out a way to get out of this together. Mm -hmm. That's seeking to understand. It's not just like seeking like, it's not just I feel bad for you. It's not just like, oh, you're angry or it's you're frustrated or um, you're really excited. It's, it's getting to a deeper level of I really understand you. And I think that sympathy is not what we've said it's been. Yeah. I think empathy is completely underrated. Yeah. Number four, resist the urge to judge and criticize. Okay, so this comes from um, Dale Carnegie's How to uh, Win Friends and Influence People. But basically, um, you're never going to get anywhere with anybody by pointing out their flaws. Mm -hmm. And it's like uh, kind of like coaching 101 is um, – he Carnegie talks about in this book, but there's a, a renowned psychologist named B.F. Skinner who um, proved um, – proved – that really showed with a lot of conviction <laughs> that um, positive reinforcement is more impactful and meaningful for behavioral change than negative. Mm -hmm. So what it means is it's so easy for us to be critical of other people. It's so easy for us to look at what they're doing and judge what they're doing. Heather does a great job of this. She never judges anybody for anybody. She's like, hey, like, don't judge parents for the way they act with their kids because you don't know what's going on, yeah. right? Like that might be one... No one's a perfect parent 100% of the time. You might be catching that one mm. snapshot, right? Yeah. Like we've all been there. That's their worst day and you right. judge and it you as their judge, average day. And you're judging that. So like if you go up and talk to them about that or judge them or criticize them or give them, like you're, you're just not going to get there. Yeah. Instead, reinforce the positive, double down on what they're doing well and try and reinforce those things to create behavioral change. This is kind of, you know, I'm not saying like, Let's not um, try to make people better. I'm mm -hmm. saying let's try to do it through a positive, impactful ways because that's what's going to create a stronger connection. Right. Not only because it's nice, but it's actually that's also effective. <laughs> both, right? <laughs> yeah. It's 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 yeah. more. Not only is it more effective, but it's it's also going to create a stronger relationship with both of us. Right. 
Uh, number five, make them feel important. Okay, so there are some um, um, integral human needs and desires, right? Which are, I'm probably gonna butcher these, but like food, shelter, and sex, I believe mm -hmm. are, the, are, the, uh, um, are those integral needs. There's one other that people miss a lot, which is the need for belonging and feeling of importance. Mm -hmm. That is up there with the others. And a lot of people would say that it actually is more important. People will die or whatever it is. What we want to do is if you want to people to, if you ever come away from a conversation and you're like, wow, that person was a great conversation or whatever, mm -hmm. they probably just made you feel really important, mm -hmm. right? And that's when people feel really good about themselves. If you have the power to do that in one-on-one -on -one or group settings, whatever it is, that's going to drive connection more than anything else you're doing. We have a saying around here, um, which is, um, um, imagine everyone has a sign around their neck that says, make me feel important. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to like, okay, what do I have to do? That's a really massive, huge undertaking, try to do that. Well, for our coaches, it, we boil down to the one really simple example, which is not that massive undertaking of... Imagine you're done coaching and it's, you know, it's the afternoon, you coach in the morning. So it's your free time and you're training in the gym and you're getting ready to PR your snatch because you've been training for the last six weeks to build up to this one momentous occasion where you're going to PR your snatch and you're warming up and you feel really good. You warm up to this point where you're like, you um, are at, you're like, you hit your number at 95% and it flies up. So you know, you're going to PR today. Yep. It's like, yes, like it's finally happened. And as you're getting ready to approach the bar, one of the members comes up to you and is like, um, you know, Ben, I was wondering, like, my forearm is really sore from today's workout. I was wondering if you could, like, you know, what should I do? If you're like, hey, hold on a second, let me hit this snatch. That's not making them feel important. Mm -hmm. What's making them feel important is, okay, let me check that out. Okay. Um, and you start talking to them about all the things that, like, you're talking about a hook grip. Maybe they're over gripping. Maybe they're reverse curling the bar instead of keeping it close, which is causing extra strain on their form. Or you talk to them about how to voodoo floss it to get recovery or use a cream that helps like pain. That's what makes them. It's not like doesn't need to be any one of these one momentous occasions. Right. Again, That's what drives connection. Yeah. What doesn't drive connection is hold on, let me hit this snatch. Mm -hmm. It's you're more important than the snatch. Let me address you right now. Number six, uh, a classic one, never gossip, break promises, or one up. This goes to something we've talked about on the podcast before, which is the emotional bank account, yeah. right? The emotional bank account works the same way as a regular bank account does. If you want to build wealth in the bank, you put more deposits than you take out with withdrawals. Mm -hmm. That increases your wealth. It's the same thing in interpersonal relationships. If I put more deposits in our relationship than I do withdrawals, our relationship grows, we have greater connection. So from there, all you have to do is understand what are deposits and what are withdrawals. Mm -hmm. Well, deposits are things like we've been talking about. These, yep. those are all deposits. Yep. Withdrawals are those. They are breaking promises. It's the fastest way to um, create, uh, strip away trust is by breaking promises. If you say to me like, hey, let's get up and meet at the track at 5 a.m. tomorrow. I'm like, really? You're like, <laughs> yes, let's do it. I'm like, all right, I show up at the track at 5 a.m. tomorrow and you're not there. Yeah. I might give you some freedom based off of our relationship in the past. And you're like, hey, dude, sorry, I couldn't make it. Something popped up. I'll meet you there tomorrow. <laughs> you don't show up tomorrow. You've broken two promises. By that, by two times, we're done. Yep. Like, I'm not showing up And if we're not three. tight, one time is enough to. And if to there's no history, yeah. one time is enough. Yeah. Exactly. So breaking promises, um, talking behind people's backs. When you talk behind someone's back, you're not hurting the person you're talking about. You're breaking the relationship down of the person you're talking to. Because mm -hmm. what you're saying to that person is, I can't be trusted. When you're not here, I'm going to be talking about you. Now, if you do the opposite, if you show up at 5 a.m. every day, actually you're there beforehand, and maybe I even call you to make sure you're coming, and I you know, like go above and beyond, like all the little small things. And I don't talk about people behind, talk behind people's backs. I do the opposite. I defend them when they're not mm -hmm. here. Well, now all of a sudden that's driving even more connections. Yep. This guy can be trusted and yep. so on. Number seven, ask interesting questions. Okay, so the easy ones like let's what aren't interesting questions are closed-ended questions that can be answered with yes or no. Yep. Like I'm not gonna get any further with you by like um, 
or really quick ones like with my kid like how is the school like if it's good right. okay you know like um instead i ask how um <clears throat> what and sometimes why so not how did you do not how is school uh that's actually how um but not like um was school good today mm -hmm. yes say um what did you do at school today mm -hmm. right that's going to drive further connection um and i say sometimes why because why can sometimes challenge uh, motives and emotion. If I ask like, um, why did you do that that way? Like all of a sudden it's like, I'm attacking mm -hmm. you. Instead of saying like, what are the reasons you did it that way? Yeah. Now it's like, this is just. Yep. And it's the same question. It's just phrased differently. Uh, that's that what it, all this is, yeah. right? It's all these yeah. small things. Yep. Um, how and what are really powerful and really good. Sometimes wise. Wise can be really important yeah. at the right time. Yeah. But they're in the so, right order. <laughs> but they're so powerful. You got to yeah. be cautious with them and then stay away from closing any questions. Yeah. One question that I love uh, instead of like when you when you first meet somebody, uh, instead of sort of the classic, you know, what do you do or whatever. Um, asking them what they're excited about uh, can open that. open a really interesting, fun conversation. Love it. So similar to that is like when I have an issue with um, um, one of my employees, I, I'm really not going to go with the whys there, mm -hmm. right? I'm definitely not going to go with the close-ended questions like, like, did you show up to work today right. on time? Like that's a, ter yeah. a terrible leading question. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't want to go, why did you not show up to work on time today? That's a bad one as well. Instead, it's... Um, you didn't show up to work on time today. What can I do to help you? Mm -hmm. Now it's on me. We're on the same side, building yep. connection together, yep. trying to solve this problem together, not me versus you. Cool. Uh, number eight, listen completely and sincerely. I might add another thing into that, which is listen aggressively. Mm. So um, listen completely and sincerely, as we've talked about on here before. Um, it's basically doing the opposite of what most people are doing when they're in a conversation, which is waiting for their turn to talk. Right. They're formulating their response. And essentially what you're doing there is you're not having a conversation. You're just, you're in debate and there's no connection that happens yeah, you're in You're taking debate. turns. Exactly. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> right? Instead, literally when the other person is talking, allow yourself the freedom, allow yourself the moment of not having a response. Mm -hmm. So when they get done, there should be no response. If you have one immediately right away, you're taking turns. Mm -hmm. There's no real built up connection there. Instead, I don't want to say count to three, count right. to five. That's even worse because now you're doing it again. But you're just, <laughs> now you're you're like, while well, they're talking, you're like, I'm going to count to three when I'm done with yeah. it. Be so engaged in what they're saying that there is no response right away. Instead, when they're done, that's your chance to internalize it. That's your chance to uh, formulate your response. And then what I mean by aggressively is actually not only um, sincerely and actively, um, but aggressively is like ask prodding leading questions mm -hmm. that will further the conversation. Yeah. And it's okay to interrupt in the middle to, um, you know, Voss, the guy that wrote um, mm. Chris Voss. Never Split the, never split yeah. the Difference. Um, if it's if, like mirroring, mirroring yep. is so powerful and like, um, like you said, dot, dot, dot. Does that mean dot, dot, dot? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, now I'm like, I'm listening to you and I'm furthering the conversation in another direction. Yeah. It's funny. All of these sort of like, you can, you can connect them a lot. So what you just said made me think of, that's a really good way to make somebody else feel important uh -huh, when they right. feel like they're not only listening and it's internalizing, thing, but and it's they body want, language yeah, it's, and it's making, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're all, these are all layers that you can, the, the more you can add to it, the deeper it gets, Correct. right? Which yes. is very, very cool. Um, number nine, compliment without hesitation. If you have something nice to say, Heather told me this once and it just stuck with me forever. She's like, if you have something nice to say to somebody and you don't say it, it's like buying a present wrapping it and not giving it to them. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's so good. Right? So the idea behind that is like, nothing's going to make people feel better. You're not going to yeah. get any more connection than by making people feel good and feel appreciated. Now, it's got to be authentic. Yeah. It can't be like, you know, wow, you're such a good coach. Like today's class was when it wasn't. It's like a normal class. Like, yeah. Today's class was amazing. I just love, it's like, if it's transparent, it's not authentic. That's going to, all of these things have to be done for real nothing yeah. can be just like done by checking boxes yeah but if you want to build connection with people it's it's just that like like compliment them like they're gonna feel so good when you do that mm -hmm.
Yep. All right, last one. I love this one. Lead with tough love and kind truths. Okay, so again, this is about being authentic. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's the same exact thing. But um, as much as we've just talked about, like make them feel special, make them feel good, compliment them. It's got to be real. And basically like the only people that, I shouldn't say the only people, when people give you the truth and it is the truth and you know it's the truth, well, that lets them you know that they can be trusted. Really good coaches do this. Really good coaches don't hold things back just for whatever reason. If they're doing it, they're doing it because they want to tactfully mm-hmm. approach the subject at the right time. But leaders and people that you connect with tell you the truth. And I wouldn't say is um, when I say lead. That when I say lead with um, um, kind truth, tough, that, that's tough mean, love and kind truth. That yep. doesn't mean lead like start with it. Yep. It means like be a leader. Like um, um, being kind doesn't always mean being kind. Sometimes mm-hmm. being kind is telling the truth, and that's the kindest thing you can do as a manager and an employee. If I want to create stronger connection. The best thing I can do is tell people exactly where they stand at all times. The worst thing I can do is like, you're doing great. You're doing just swell. Yeah. You're meeting every bit of expectations we have. And you come to the quarterly review and they're like, um, so we're going to let you go. Right. Like, what? <laughs> right. Like, you're, that was so, like, instead, along the way, be like, hey, listen, this project you just did is not meeting our expectations. Um, this thing that you, um, this client interaction you had did not go the way we wanted it mm-hmm. to. This dot, and you can figure out um, so much more about the connection you have with somebody if you're just being truthful. That is our 10 principles of connecting. That's Thanks, fun. Pat. Right. You can get every episode of Chasing Excellence wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for listening.